Howdy. So uh, we talked earlier about um, Newton's second law, and uh, we're so we're going to do a lab and notes on Newton's second law and the coefficient of friction. And uh, first of all, we have the first law here, where the forces are balanced and we have no acceleration. So Newton's first law says an object will maintain constant velocity unless acted upon by unbalanced forces. In the second one, we get the idea that one of the forces is definitely out of balance, and this this object will be accelerating to the right. There'll be no acceleration in the vertical plane. The two vertical forces on this bottom one cancel out. The one to the right is much larger than the one to the left, and so it will accelerate to the right as per Newton's um, Newton's second law. And so the next thing I'll can you move, please? There we go. Okay, and so Newton's second law is this relationship here. The acceleration is proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. So the greater the force you have, the harder they push and pull, the more it will accelerate. But the greater the mass you have, which is shown by the large mass there, the harder it is to accelerate it. So that's Newton's second law. So how does that apply to the idea of friction? And so with friction, we did this... Um, little demo where um, the blue one is representative of the wood inside with the bottom is a smooth wood inside and the purple one is representative of the of the felt side and so I'm going to take those two numbers along with the acceleration graph down here this is a force graph on top an acceleration graph on the bottom and we're going to talk about um, how to get the coefficient of friction by looking at these things so here we go. No, not there. Um, we are going here. And um, so here we go. So this is uh, Newton's second law and the coefficient of friction. And the first thing we did is we did a, um, a graph. And the graph is an FT graph. And it also has an acceleration time graph that goes along with it. So um, what happened? And so I want to tell a story about what happened. And so the object is pulled until a point. where it moves and that point is the maximum friction before movement and so the way the graph will look is a little bit like this um, no force not being pulled and then it begins to be pulled and then at a point here it will begin to move. And so the acceleration is going to uh, be like this. It will accelerate in this part right here. Okay. Um, that maximum, before it moves, that maximum right there is referred to as Fs. And Fs is the what's called static friction. And um, static friction is not moving. Okay. Then, story continues. Then, the friction drops while moving. And that is referred to as FK. And FK is known as kinetic friction. And so you will see that the graph drops a little bit like this. Okay, kinetic friction. And kinetic friction is always lower. Than static friction. 
Okay. Um, all right. So, in this, that was the um, that was the wood one. Uh, sorry, that was the felt one. And as our example, and this point here was 0.5 newtons. And this point along here is pretty much the um, 0.4 newtons. And it's kind of the same as it goes through. And um, this is the um, felt side of the of the the friction block. Okay. And then if you noticed the acceleration actually dropped and it went to zero. So acceleration here equals zero. Acceleration here also equals zero. And then here we have a positive acceleration because we are we've broke free of the friction and we begin to accelerate. And then here um, we're just gonna pull at a steady rate. And the steady rate will give us a acceleration of zero in the end. Okay. So we're going to look at um, two things. We're going to look at the, this point here, which I'm going to call um, T1. And then we're going to look at this point here, and it could be anywhere along here, which I'm going to call T2. This is T1 and this is T2. Now, if we do the same exact thing for uh, the wood side, Um, it was a little bit lower. It was kind of like this, and then kind of like this. And so that point for the wood side, um, we found out to be about 0.45 newtons. And this point was about what I uh, 0.35 newtons. And that was the wood side of the apparatus. And of course, the acceleration looked pretty much the same, like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, and graph those out. We're going to um, look at T1 as being the point where we had Fs maximum. That's our maximum static friction. And we got to know that this is before motion. Okay, and so I'm going to draw a little force diagram like this, and I'm going to draw a second force diagram, and the object actually has a, a FG, which is a negative uh, 1.32 newtons. FG equals a negative 1.32 newtons. So we know the FG and FN are the same. Okay. So this force, the force at the peak, is going to be this way. And that is called static friction. And in the same case, in, in T2, we have a lower, a lesser um, amount for Fk. Now, in this force diagram, it looks like it's... Okay. In this force diagram, it looks like it's going to be accelerating to the left. It's not. It's actually sitting there. So if it's sitting there, the, the net force has to be zero. So that means that my applied force will be the same as the force of, of friction. And that's true. Uh, up into this maximum point, it's going to be same, 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 not moving. And then all of a sudden, it's going to break free. It's going to begin to move. Now, once I move at a constant velocity, constant velocity also says that my acceleration is zero. So A equals zero. A equals zero. So these will also be equal. My applied force will also be equal to my force of friction. And so this is the Fn. What's the Fn equal? Well, of course, Fn equals 1.32 newtons. What is Fn over here equal? It's the same block that equals 1.32 newtons. Okay. So um, from there, then we um, can look at the idea of what is this, what is this, All right? And what is this and how do we get this? Well, this is an idea which is called the, the coefficient of friction. And we use the letter mu to denote what the coefficient of friction is. And what the coefficient of friction actually is, it's a ratio between, thank you, it's a ratio between 
um, the friction, which I'm going to put as a, an F like that, over the normal force. So this normal force um, helps to give us our, our friction. Um, and so if you have no normal force, you have no friction. So if you consider like, a, for instance, air hockey, right? The air actually buoys up the, um, the puck. And so the puck doesn't have any normal force. And so it you know, gets rid of the friction. That's why the, the, the puck in air hockey just glides on air. It doesn't really have any friction from the table anymore. Once the air stops, it drops onto the table and now there's friction. And so the friction, um, the coefficient of friction basically says how much friction is there. And so the one on the left is going to have a greater amount of friction because it was harder to pull. And the one on the right is going to have a lesser amount of friction because it is easier to pull. Um, if I um, use a, a wax surface or ice, it has a very low coefficient of friction. If you're on asphalt, it has a higher coefficient of friction. If I wear cleats in sports, it gives me a higher coefficient of friction, so I'm not going to slip. If I'm playing soccer in my socks, I'm probably going to slip. It's got a very low coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction is the ratio of the friction to the normal force. And so um, we're going to take a look at it for each one. And so this value is a negative 0.5 newtons. And then that means the force applied must also be 0.5 newtons. And that is coming from our graph. This value right here is a negative 0.5 newtons. I was pulling that, and that also represents the friction um, on the block because it wasn't moving yet. And so that's our static friction. When we got it to move is this area. And so I was pulling with a positive 0.4 newtons, and so since these are balanced, this must be a negative 0.4 newtons. So all this is experimental. We're just trying to find out, well, how much friction is there in these two scenarios? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the idea that mu sub s is equal to the friction over the normal force. And so the friction is a, is a 0.5. And by the way, this number is going to give us a, a ratio, and it is not going to have a sign. Um, so the sign is inconsequential because it could be left or it could be right. The friction has a sign, but the ratio has no sign. So we'll take the absolute value. So um, 0.5 over 1.32. And these are both Newtons, and so the Newtons actually cancel. And we get mu sub s is equal to 0.38. Sorry not newtons, 0.38. It's like saying a percentage. It's like saying 38% of the normal force. And so let's take a look at that. If the normal force is 1.32, what is 38% of that? Point th times 0.38, and you get 0.5. And so that gives us our coefficient of static friction on this side. Okay, on this side, I can do the same thing. What is our coefficient of kinetic friction? And I have 0.4 newtons over 1.32 newtons. And so my coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be equal to 0 0.30. And that is my coefficient of kinetic friction. Now, um, we don't typically write it that way. It's a formula that you'll see on your equation sheet. The equation sheet is going to look more like this. My force of static friction will be equal to my coefficient of static friction times the normal force, or my force of kinetic friction will be equal to my coefficient of kinetic friction times my normal force. And you'll see it more like that on your equation sheet. So hopefully I got all those in the range of view on the computer and I am going to come back in a moment and I'm going to do a, uh, a sample problem if I can actually get to it. Oh my gosh, let's get to it. Here we go. All right, I'll see you in a minute.